Hello and welcome to the Parish of Alcombe with Cape Lefern and Huffham, and for me, Brian Williams, the Parish Priest. This weekend is Saturday the 5th and Sunday the 6th of September, the 13th Sunday after Trinity. As we come to worship, let's take a moment to be quiet and remember God's presence with us. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ, reconciling the world to yourself. Help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you, through him who was lifted up on the cross and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandments are summed up in this word. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us live honourably as in the day, not in revelling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarrelling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Some verses from Psalm 119. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it with all my heart. Make me go in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from watching what is worthless. Give me life in your ways. Fulfill your promise to your servant which you make to those who fear you. Turn away the reproach which I dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. In your righteousness preserve my life. Our Gospel reading is from St. Matthew, chapter 18. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, 
tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. So what do you do if another member of the church sins against you? Have a right go at them? Slag them off on social media? Call them names on Twitter. In church, we tend to read the Bible in short little chunks. But in fact, there are those who say that the Gospels may well have been written with the intention that they should be performed. We can imagine ourselves perhaps sitting in one of those big Roman amphitheatres with someone coming on stage and reciting the whole thing. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If we were watching a performance of Matthew's gospel, of course we would hear the whole thing. And if we were to do that, we would have heard what leads up to the passage that we heard a few moments ago. And what does lead up to it is this. What do you think? If a shepherd has a hundred sheep, and one of them has gone astray. Does he not leave the 99 on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. This person who has sinned against you is someone whom you care about in exactly the same way as a shepherd would care about a lost sheep. Going and pointing out the fault when the two of you are alone isn't a matter of settling scores. It's a matter of trying to bring a lost sheep back into the fold. Taking one or two other people along with you as witnesses isn't a matter of ganging up on that person. And neither is telling it to the rest of the believers. It's the whole community coming together to try to win that person back. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a tax collector and a Gentile. Except remember that Jesus spent a lot of time with tax collectors. That doesn't mean that it ends in the way that arguments between people often do. It doesn't mean don't have anything else to do with that person. Rather it means go looking for that person just as a shepherd would for a lost sheep. Because that's what God does with us. Let's pray. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. We pray for God's church throughout the world, for its calling to show God's love to the world, for those whom God sends to us to love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Love does no wrong to a neighbour. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. We pray for our world, that it may be a world in which all may learn to love others as their neighbours. We pray for those in our world who feel excluded, unloved and unwanted. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer.
We pray for our families, our friends, our neighbours. And as we remember the words of Jesus, we pray for those times when we find others difficult and pray that we may have grace to look upon them as Christ the Good Shepherd looks upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, those who are sad, those who are in trouble, especially any known to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have departed this life, both those who have died recently and those whose anniversaries fall at this time. Father of all, we pray for those whom we love but see no longer. Grant them your peace. Let light perpetual shine upon them. And in your loving wisdom and almighty power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let's finish by praying for God's blessing. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you and all those whom you love, today and always. Amen. So until next time.